if things are slipping through the cracks in your life, then this video is for you. We're going to be going step by step through how to set up a planner inside of Airtable. This is going to be a way for us to categorize our uh, different tasks and things that we need to accomplish on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. So if, uh, if you're ready to get organized and start making sure that uh, things stop getting missed, then definitely check this out. We're going to be going step by step on exactly how you can build your own customized version. All right, folks, as I mentioned in the intro, we are going to be going step by step in how you can build a really simple system that will help you get more organized so things stop getting missed. So uh, go ahead and log into your Airtable account and follow along with me. Uh, but before you do that, please do click subscribe uh, here. And if you want to get more Airtable content uh, sent to you on a regular basis, this is the place for you. That is what this whole channel is about. So without further ado, let's jump on into this Airtable base. So you'll see we have a really simple uh, setup here. We've got just tasks and contacts. You could, of course, add as many additional uh, tables as you'd like, but this is how we're going to get set up for the really easy stuff. So basically, uh, you know, we're looking at the contacts table here, and this is just a simple first and last name, and then it's linking to tasks. Of course, if this uh, were an actual like CRM, you'd have email, uh, phone number, all these other different contact points for these individuals, but this is just, like I said, bare bones for this. Uh, and then, of course, the full name here is going to be a formula that's concatenating the first and last name. Uh, and then, you know, this is pretty standard here on contacts. The real uh, stuff for this video, the good stuff, is going to come into the tasks part. So what we have is, uh, you know, I have an all records view, and that's kind of just the, the default view with no, grid, uh, no filters or anything else. And then I've got an ongoing tasks view. So we're going to take a look at the ongoing tasks view because this is where the majority of your work is going to live as you are, you know, checking things off of your list. So, uh, you know, just kind of going field by field here, you'll see we have the link to contacts. And so this serves a purpose when we have a task that is delivering or that it needs to be delivered for a specific individual or organization, we can link it to that contact. Um, and then, of course, we're also pulling in the first name here. The first name uh, field is just a lookup field where we're bringing in the first name uh, from that contacts table. So real quick example here, if we were to create a new, um, a new task, let's suppose that we just you know, picked this task uh, was for like, let's say Courtney. Uh, you'll see then that as we select Courtney and bring her in, then the first name automatically fills out standard lookup field stuff. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hide this field because it's not actually necessary uh, to be viewed. Uh, the advantage to having that field pulled in, though, uh, as you'll see in a moment, is part of this uh, task formula. But before we get into that, let's jump into this, uh, the rest of this uh, layout here. So we've got the contacts and we've got the first name. And then after that, we have a type and it's a single select field. So uh, in this case, I just have one uh, here, but any other um, type of different tasks that you have, uh, you could uh, create an, a, a specific type for. So if this were like a business use case, for example, um, you could have, uh, you know, like a consultation might be a type. Uh, just for example, right? So you can just, you know, customize that as you see fit and, uh, and add different types into your own, uh, you know, little uh, personal planner here. Notes is a long text field, and this is where we can put in all the data and information that pertains to uh, this particular task. If we have any notes, obviously they could be added here. A couple of other things that you might include uh, might be a URL if, for whatever reason, you have uh, a specific website that you wanted to associate with a task. You could include a URL. Uh, similarly, uh, you might also include a file uh, and, and bring in an attachment field. And the advantage to this, of course, being if you had any specific files that you wanted to associate with that, uh, you could drop those in as well. So uh, jumping in to the, the next part here, we have just a standard date field, and this is going to be the date that the task is due. Uh, so in this case, let me just throw a date in here, and I'll pick you know sometime uh, next uh, week. And if there is a specific start time to that, you can include that here. Uh, let's say this was at, uh, I don't know, 10 a.m. I might uh, put it in like this, 
And then if I had a duration, you know, perhaps this is a 30 minute uh, thing, then I could bring it in there. Now there's really no uh, value to having these summaries happening here. So I will turn these off because uh, there's no reason to evaluate that. And then last but not least, we have this uh, complete checkbox. And this is where uh, once something has been completed, we could uh, just give it a check and signifying that it is done. So before uh, I do that though, let's go into this task uh, naming field. Now just quick uh, rewind here, whenever we determine that primary field, the first, then the primary field is the first field or column, uh, we always want to make sure that this is a very specific or unique uh, name. In this case, what I'm doing is I have a, a concatenate formula with a nested if statement. Basically, it says this. It says, if the date is empty, then this is automatically going to be an ongoing task. Because sometimes we have those tasks where we don't have a specific date assigned to them. And so that was, that's going to be one of those ongoing things, and that is going to uh, get a unique name. And so in that case, it will be called ongoing and then whatever the type of uh, the type is here in this field. Uh, if, that, if the date is filled out, then it'll go into the next part of the logic, which says if contacts is blank, then the task will just be called the type and the date. And if contacts is not blank, then we're going to uh, follow this last part of the formula, which says we are going to be the type with the first name. Remember, we brought that first name in through that lookup and, uh, and then the, the date as well. So three different potential outcomes for how this formula might work. And in this case, you see because we have a contact filled out and because there's a date, it says you know, the, the name of this is consultation dash Courtney dash the date of the event. So this is a great way to organize all your stuff. So let's, let me just throw in some other things here. Perhaps I have an ongoing task uh, that does not have a date. You'll see that this says ongoing task now. Uh, similarly, I might create one that has a different date. Just like this. And uh, let's see, we can bring in a, a task here and we could leave some example notes. And you see in this case, uh, there is no name brought in here and it's just called task. So this is how uh, you can just kind of fill all this out. If you wanted to also get a nice view of this on a calendar so that you could, um, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps you prefer the standard calendar view, then of course you could do that just by selecting the view, creating a calendar view and using the date field here uh, in order to uh, put all these different things on that calendar. So. Hope that this is helpful for you. Uh, one last thing before I sign off here, I do want to point out that I have applied a filter that says that uh, complete is not checked. So that way, this is really easy for us to, once we've completed a task, we just check the box and it's removed, just removed from the view, and we don't have to worry about uh, deleting that record. Of course, uh, we typically don't want to just delete information and data, uh, but it's best to just remove it from our active view so that we don't have it consistently uh, in our face. All right, as always, I hope you found that to be super helpful. If you did, please be sure to click subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any specific Airtable questions, uh, definitely check out the uh, link in the description below where you can set up some time to uh, have a free consultation with me. And in the meantime, Best of luck as you continue to grow your empire.